was ever envisaged before. Thank you, Deputy uh, Minister. Would it be possible to bank two or three questions or, or, or submissions at the, time, at the time? Maybe the Minister might answer that way, because otherwise we'll be very, very late in the day. I, I think many members wanted direct answers, but if the questions could be specific and that, I think the Minister is... I might be taking this group if you want. I don't mind either way. I'll take, I'll take, I'll take three then contributors. So the second one was uh, Deputy, uh, yourself, Deputy Durkin. Thank you, Chairman. Um, and, and, uh, first of all, thank you, Minister, for uh, coming before the committee and, and for giving us of your time. And I would uh, congratulate you for the efforts you have made uh, and your colleagues in the government over the past number of years. At a time that was very, very uh, uh, fraught with difficulties, and particularly in, in respect of access to finance. And uh, that has to be acknowledged in the climate which we've been for the last six or eight years. I, 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 I in fact, agree with uh, Deputy Coppinger in relation to the extent to which the public housing programme can impact on the market. Uh, to my mind, the shift from the direct build local authority uh, housing programme in the 80s over to reliance on, on private, the private rental sector, supported by the Department of Social Welfare, was a wrong decision. And I've spoken about it many, many times, and I believe that the evidence is there to support that. So I would agree strongly that in, in, we, have, we have two issues. One is the immediate issue, the emergency issue, and we need to accelerate every, uh, particular, uh, everything we can do in terms of procedures to ensure that we address that particular issue in the shortest possible time. And I would ask the Minister there, you know, to, to put particular emphasis on that, whether it be by way of direct build, by the way of modular housing, or by the way of uh, acquisition of housing, uh, pri uh, existing private housing, either new or second hand. The, I would suggest also the use of uh, the, 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 the rolling over of property has been, to my mind, a, a serious feature in making housing very expensive in this country. For example, during the boom, it was not at all unusual for a site to be acquired for a sum of money to be passed over to a second uh, uh, owner. Uh, uh, and a third and a fourth, resulting in up to ten times the original cost of the site to whoever was going to buy a house or build a house on that particular site. And you know, Mr Chairman, and we all know of instances where that happened. <coughs> now, I don't believe we have an obligation to, in, to, to, to facilitate that kind of thing, because the first priority has surely to be, both in respect of those who are seeking private housing or public housing, should be to make it as affordable as possible. I would suggest also that the use of private sites, developed private sites by the local authorities, which was a facility that was very well used in time past and was very effective in enabling people who are on the local authority housing list build their own homes to their own specification generally uh, without, without impacting on anybody. And, 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 and the, the next part is the local authority housing loans. Uh, they're effectively gone for years. And there was, that was part of the switch over from the public uh, housing programme to reliance on the private rental sector. So that was, uh, well, was, 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 was as it was stolen. And I, f I cannot but mention in, in relation to what we do in the future, we need a plan. That's correct. The plan previously was to rely on the private sector. And, and there's no reflection of the private sector at all. The plan was wrong. It could never work. And I would be one of those people who, during the 80s, and I'm sure that many members here, during the 80s, we were able, in our own local authority, this is the example I finished with, in our own local authority, we had roughly 1,000 houses becoming available for that income group and the average industrial wage, and the average industrial wage, for at roughly 1,000 houses per annum in our county. And that's 25 years ago, there, thereabouts. And in comparison, we have nothing to replace that, except the private rental sector, which is subject to the fluctuations of the market, which makes it impossible. Thank you, Deputy. And in this, in this group of questions, Deputy Canny. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, and thanks, Minister, and your team for coming in. I suppose um, I'm listening to your forthright presentation here and, and, and I'm impressed with it on the basis that I, I, you're, you're telling us as it is. There are a few things that you mentioned there that I just might want to activate a bit more. The idea of the land, uh, active land management and how that would work uh, in the sense of, I presume it's what Deputy Durkin is talking about in relation to service sites or whatever. Um, that's just one thing. The other thing was uh, to get a bit more uh, on the, the cost of the house, you say, is it 38% of the cost of a house goes in taxes? 
My concern is that if we say, for instance, take the VAT rate and reduce it to zero from 13.5 down to zero, are we creating a lever by which the developer is going to make the margin, and how do we control that? And, and, and just get your thoughts on that. Um, we, you spoke about the uh, local authorities, and I suppose the local authorities, I feel, are under awful pressure, not so much in trying to provide the housing, but in trying to deal with the housing situation in every local authority, from the social workers right through how they can get people who are declaring ho homeless on a daily basis. And it's not just confined to Dublin or to the cities, it's in every town. Um, and I'm wondering, have you any thoughts on how the local authorities <coughs> could actually be, be better equipped in terms of um, resources to handle that? And the other area where I feel that the local authorities have, I wouldn't say failed, but it has been questionable, is their ability to manage the estates from once they're built. And I've seen many and numerous of cases where fine estates are built and within weeks you see houses boarded up in them again. And this is absolutely criminal in terms of a waste of money of our public resource. Um, so I suppose what I'm asking for is maybe your comments on, on, on them. And I suppose the last thing I would say uh, to the Minister, as you're in a situation where you have had, have had the experience of the last 20 something months in the department, have you any specific further recommendations that you would like to make to us? Or are there any changes that you would offer or advice you would offer uh, on the basis that look at, you have been at the cold face of it, you have looked at it, and I don't need 10 things, but you might have two or three things to say, if you look at this, look at that. I think that would be very, very uh, worthwhile. I, I don't think uh, we need to comment on what has happened. I think what we need to do is comment on what we can do in the future. Thank you, Thank Deputy. You. Minister, as you're answering the questions, one of the questions was very specific from Deputy Coppinger. It was in relation to the Attorney General's advice that you and Cabinet received in, sec in relation to difficulties with the constitution you were talking about uh, the rights and I'm anticipating you're going to say that that type of advice won't be made public so let me just put it another way if you because you've been very forthright in your responses if there had been an amendment to the constitution a right to housing amendment to the constitution do you feel that decisions that you and government have made could and would have been somewhat different Yes. And, and more equitable and the better good served. Is that well, well, a it's, fair it's, reflection? Well, it probably is, but like, let's just praise it, or let's just you know, condition that statement. And it would depend on what was changed in the Constitution and how it was. Like, it's a huge question. You, you just, you know, it's, you, you can't answer it definitively. But I would say, I would say yes. But um, you'd ha you want, what, why? You know, I'm one of these people who, on, on certain topics, I, I believe we need, do need to amend the Constitution, but I'm also a bit careful about sometimes you can make things worse. So, um, but it will depend on how you do it. But certainly, I do feel that we have, need an open discussion on that article. And I say that to everyone genuinely for the right reasons. Maybe just put, put, put that out there. You know, I think it is, it is something. I think, I think, I think it is something that we need to uh, need to uh, discuss. But if, the, if if there was an amendment, as the chair said, we just say a generic type of an amendment that was in a favourable way. Yes, I do think it would have made it easier. Um, okay, I try and address uh, um, many of the uh, issues. Um, I, I'll jump across because some of them are duplication, if that's all right. Um, just in relation to um, Deputy Coppinger, um, just uh, in relation to the 35,000, the 22,300 um, the build and require um, is um, you know 50 50 um, capital funding through local authorities and then through the HB as well so I mean there's then on top of that 11,000 which is coming through pure leasing and there's 2,300 through voids which we've been incredibly successful with but I also want to say this we had to ramp up We've had to ramp up um, our uh, building. And whatever anyone says about building houses, they take two to three years to build. That's just a fact, except for the rapid build housing, which I think we should discuss later on as well. Um, uh, and 
any houses that are being built now, I didn't lay the foundations for them. I don't mean literally, but I didn't commence them. They were commenced by my predecessors. And there are 5,000 houses commenced or in the process of being done across the country uh, at the moment, which we have. So it takes time to turn it up. Uh, and um, those houses that are, 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 have been closed off in the last uh, year or so were done because of, of what was done uh, three years ago. Um, the, uh, if we were going to produce a huge volume of houses now immediately this year, they should have been planned three years ago. The simple fact of the matter is we've been, we didn't have the money. So, I mean, uh, we need a pipeline uh, of housing. We need a pipeline, a continuous pipeline of social housing. And what I've set out through the social housing strategy is to get up to a pipeline of 10,000 houses being built, in the, or in excess of 10,000 houses being built every year. Uh, and that's where the rebalancing happens, uh, uh, Deputy. But it's not going to happen overnight. I accept the number of houses built is small. The facts are the facts. I, I know that. And you know what? This year there will be hundreds of houses built, right? Because of the work that was done, uh, in many cases, preceding me. But the year after that, it will be thousands. And the year after that, it will be up near the figure that I want, which is 10,000. And that's just the way... It, because of the way in which it has to work. But we do need to come back and talk about rapid build, Deputy, because I think uh, uh, we, you know, that's an important sector. The other issue is that um, when it comes to uh, the current situation, we talk about building houses, and I agree. But in many cases, the, the local authorities simply buy, or working with the AHBs and the local authorities, lease, because it's cheaper. And we talked about, and some people have questioned uh, the way in which the houses out in, um, uh, in Ballymun uh, have been put up. And we can talk about that. I'm fine about that. But they're saying, why don't you just buy houses? It's cheaper. The fact is, we're doing that as well, on top of everything, to create more, uh, more, more, more uh, housing. When it comes to the actual, uh, and the deputy referred to the, the capital budget, you're right in relation to 2008. You're right it's lower than 2008. And the reason it's lower than 2008 is because by 2008, we had a decade of uh, ramping up of a housing capital budget uh, because we had a significant uh, boom period in the Irish state. Simple fact of the matter, we're just after coming out of uh, the worst economic crisis ever. Um, so if you look at our capital budget um, for this uh, area, in 2014, uh, when uh, it was 299 million, in 2015 it's 430 million, and 2016 it's 528 million. Now, by any percentages, that's a fairly significant increase year on year uh, in the current situation. And if you look at the uh, at total budgets uh, of the department across the whole lot you will see that there has been a, a significant uh, increase as well. Now up to 933 uh, million. Uh, from 2014, which isn't that long ago, of 583 million. Um, I want to address an issue in relation to the waiting, uh, in relation to the waiting list. Um, you know, we've had a lot of discussion in, um, in this country about how many people are waiting for social housing and what is the true figure. Um, we've taken the 2013 figure, then you have uh, the figure which is um, put up by others when they've got to calculate all the local authorities put together and all of that. Um, the housing agency used to do this figure every three years. So the last, 2013 was the last time. I've now insisted and initiated a process where it's done every single year because we need that data, uh, because we need to know what we're really dealing with. Um, but the facts in between uh, uh, or the, the, the analysis in between has shown that uh, the figure of actual people who are looking for social housing uh, and the numbers that are being bandied out uh, simply don't add up. So the analysis that has been put out there in relation to totting up all local authorities doesn't take into effect that some people on, are on uh, social housing lists for, for a number of years and don't have a needs assessment needs for it anymore. Um, that in some cases they're, they are on housing lists, but they, um, they have no requirement or they're on it for other reasons. 
that there are people certainly in Dublin who are on multiple lists or they've been double counted, right? And there are other issues as well. Um, and that's not to play down that we, have, we still have huge figures. We do have still have huge figures. This is important information. So Cork, Cork, um, Cork City went to did a, and I want to talk about this later on. Cork City did an analysis to, of choice-based lighting, which I think should be rolled out across the country. And it found out that there was a 25% drop in the amount of people who were requiring social housing. And then once it became uh, available, choice-based lighting, where you put the properties out there, 40% of the people who were on the original list aren't even active. So they're not actively looking. So I think it's important uh, that uh, we, you know, we engage that uh, information. In relation to um, ramping up for local authority building, uh, which a couple of the, uh, the representatives said, um, it did take time. Um, I did get cooperation. There are 450 odd staff or more who are actually after being put into local authorities. I have to say, I uh, got cooperation from the majority of local authorities, but I was disappointed uh, with the manner in which some of the recruitment still hasn't happened. Uh, because, you know, local authorities did get out of social housing, they have to ramp back into social housing, and they need the personnel to do that. But they have the capacity uh, to uh, do that. Um, in relation to um, uh, the volume of local authority houses, uh, or the, 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 uh, the, um, the percentages, the percentages, I believe, are quite ambitious. And if anyone wants to look at them, they can see the volume of funding that has been allocated to each, in the, each local authority. And, you know, if you look, at, I'll just pick at random here, but if you look at Cork County Council, it's 80 million that they have up until the end of 2017. Cork City Council is 124. Dublin City Council, just Dublin City Council, 292 million. Um, South Dublin, 73 million. And even if you go down to uh, the likes of uh, Kilkenny, 43 million. Um, or even a smaller county like Carlow has over 20 million. So there's a considerable amount of funding there for local authorities up until the end of next uh, year. Um, and overall, when you look at the total targets in Dublin, it comes up to 30% of the total deputy. 30% of the total. And I'll break down the figures if you want. 3,347 in DCC. 1,376 in Fingal, 681 in Dunleary, and South Dublin 1,445, which makes 6,849. In relation to uh, Tyrrellstown, um, I met with the representatives of Tyrrellstown. I'm quite suspect about getting into detail on this, uh, Chair, because there are negotiations and discussions going on, and I'm privy to them, and I don't want to uh, deal with that. But in general, uh, um, I've spoken about the issue in relation to the sale of houses and the article of the Constitution. But in general, there are options uh, available to uh, the uh, tenants there working through the local authorities. Uh, and I've uh, made sure that from a local authority level that they will uh, facilitate them in whatever way they can. But I do want to point this out, and this is a fact that's not known. Of all um, the... Uh, you know, of the number of people who actually are involved in various different uh, schemes for uh, you know, purchasing their local authority houses, etc., we have to be quite careful uh, because a higher than average percentage of them are actually now in arrears. So we have to be very careful in relation to that. Um, uh, in relation to uh, Deputy uh, Canning, um, on the whole area of, of land uh, management, I, I agree. I agree with you. I think it's, uh, you asked me what my recommendations would be at the end, and thank you for doing that. I'll do that at the end. I have more than two, by the way. But um, I think we need better land management. I think it's a critical issue, and I think it needs to be more coordinated. Um, my colleague here has maps in relation to uh, the volume of sites and zonings available across Dublin. I mean, if you look, there is 27,000 uh, houses with planning permission in Dublin. There's another 20,000 with very little that has to be done, they would probably get planning, basically, because their services are there. That's 50,000 that are available uh, pretty quickly. And so that, you know, that, that raises a certain, uh, certain issue. Um, so we must find ways in which to actively develop, uh, develop such, uh, such land. In relation to your uh, question on costs, 38%. The big one is VAT. Uh, you've also got part five, which I, I think I've addressed in a fair way. 
you've also got the issue of development contributions. But you have to get the balance right. I agree with you. There's no point in just uh, cutting the VAT down to zero and then uh, it doesn't get passed on to the, to the house buyer. You have to have a process in which you ensure. So in other words, you have to have conditioning built in, some of which we did already uh, recently in relation to developments in Dublin and Cork, keeping them under 300,000 and 250,000, that the sale price of the house or apartment has to be at a certain level before you qualify for such an exemption. That's what I would recommend. And we have to map and zone that all over the country, whereby if you are building a house and if you want to avail at this special rate, that you have to sell the house and no underhand stuff, you have to sell the house or apartment at a certain amount, depending on the location. Uh, and that would be set at the national uh, level. That would be my recommendation in relation to, uh, in relation to that. Um, uh, so, sorry. Better estate management. Oh, yeah, of course. Um, the last uh, question which you asked about, Deputy, was <laughs> in relation to uh, estates. Now, there has been significant progress made in this area. In 2015, uh, there was, uh, there was uh, 5,000 voids uh, remediated. And 2016, we're finding uh, funding for another 1,600. But in the whole area of unfinished estates, there's been an awful lot of work done. But a perennial issue also is not just uh, that, but it's the taking in charge of estates. I started a process only one of the last, I think it was one of the last things signed off by government before the election, of uh, a fund and a process for uh, the taking in charge, to, to do a five-year plan for the taking in charge of all estates in this country. They were categorised and they were put into various different categories. Some estates have any small issues in relation to uh, curbing, lights, etc. But others have water issues and waste issues which are incredible. Um, so they can't all be categorised together. But the fund, which I have initiated and started, has been put in place uh, in relation to, uh, in relation to uh, that. Um, the regulation in relation to most, near virtually all of the stuff in relation to the rental space which I made the changes for have been put in place. And the regulation which you have uh, asked me about will be signed on Tuesday. Oh, will be signed on Tuesday. Well, it actually takes time to write up legally a regulation. So that's a positive thing. I, I don't think, I'm not defensive all the time. Sorry, Chair, one sentence. No, uh, the, the Minister gave a wrong figure. He said 30% has been spent in Dublin. 60% of the housing need is in Dublin, according to Mr. Cummins, who was in here on Monday. 30% of the target is what I said. Yeah, well, 60% of the housing need. Well, I didn't give a wrong figure. Okay. Wrong uh, th thank, you, thank, you, thank you, Minister. There, I'm going to take a series of questions because I'm particularly anxious towards the end the issue that you've said yourself in terms of various suggestions and recommendations. I don't want that to be passed by. Deputy Wallace. <coughs> Here um, Minister, I just want to ask you a few questions uh, just in relation to what you, what your contribution. Uh, I suppose just uh, one overall comment, I suppose. Um, I'm, 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 not, um, I'm not convinced that uh, there's an acceptance of uh, how bad things are. Um, um, I, I just think that um, there's almost um, the, the, the way we've been trying to deal with this for a number of years is not the way to make it to fix it. We're, we're not uh, making progress. Um, I, I mean, people don't like the word even being mentioned uh, in these buildings, but uh, there's been a neoliberal approach to how uh, we deliver housing, and it's been very problematic. It doesn't work, and we need to do something different. Now, just to address some of the questions, or some of the points that you made, uh, you say that... Uh, you talk about what role the state should play, and you say that social housing in Ireland is generally on the 9% mark of the, as, as what we supply. Uh, but uh, do you admit that, uh, given the central bank rules, which I also agree with, uh, because I don't see why uh, we should uh, p drive people uh, into despair uh, down the road uh, with, with problems around mortgages that they can't meet, uh, but... Uh, that does the, the flip side of that is that it is expected that in the future in Ireland the state is going to have to help about 30% of the people with housing. So 
that's a huge, that's a big game changer. That figure from, of, of 9%, and I know it's been, probably been 15% at certain periods uh, in, in the state's lifetime, but that is likely to go to about 30%, and I think we've got to start accepting that. Um, and I'm, asking, I'm wondering, do you agree with that or not? Uh, you, uh, the local authorities, right? You ask if the local authorities have the wherewithal to build the housing. Well, I mean, obviously, local authorities themselves uh, are not in a position to directly build themselves. But they are. When we talk about directly build local authority housing, we're talking about the local authorities organising it and the state paying for it. But obviously, you're going to have to put it out to tender and get builders to build it. And uh, they do have the capacity to do that. And. Uh, with regard to actually dealing with the problem, I mean, uh, just to be parish pump about it, I mean, in Wexford, in, in 2016, they, they, they have pro approved projects for 31 uh, units, and in 2017, they have approved projects for 36. Uh, house acquisitions for vulnerable groups, 2016, 55, 2017, 40. Now, I know of two projects that are actually ready to go, and... Uh, like, Timon has uh, they're ready to start 16 houses, but they can't get the funding. It's not been approved. Car Car Timon, it's a best, it's all it's it's a ready to go site, but uh, it hasn't got uh, approved funding. Uh, Carrigan Bano uh, has there's 10 units ready to start, but they haven't got approved funding. Uh, it, when we have such a, <coughs> a demand, I mean, I'm wondering, I'm asking you, what uh, is delaying the decision to approve the funding? Is my question to you, right? Uh, there's Right. With, with regard to, uh, I mean, you talk about the uh, the waiting list being inaccurate. I mean, there's 3,800 on it in Wexford. Now, if that's inaccurate, well, I mean, is there, can we get someone to make it accurate? I mean, uh, yeah, well, I mean, okay, what's the figure in Wexford then? No, it, uh, that's why it's been done this year. Fine, okay, right. Uh, you talk about... The vacant site levy, as if, uh, I know you say that you'd have liked that brought it in in 2017 and you'd like 7%. Well, I mean, I'm glad to hear that. But the, the vacant site levy that was brought in before Christmas, do you not agree it is absolutely a joke? It, it is there, it's going to bring in so little, it is not going to speed up the development of sites. Are you going to tell me otherwise? I mean, if a fella, if a fella has, has borrowed the money to actually uh, land bank, you're not asking them to even pay tax on it. You're not, asking, you're not hitting them with a levy. It's paying 75% if he owes more than 75% of the money. And of course he owes more than 75% of the money. He'd be off his head if he, if he wasn't borrowing uh, to acquire land for land banking. So do you not admit that the state has refused to actually address the problem with land banking? Because that is the fact. And it is, the, it is probably the biggest problem in terms of affordability around private housing in Ireland, land banking. It, there's, there's, I see a site sold in Clontarf last week for, I think it's 27 units, right? The, the, the builder, the developer, paid over 220,000 per unit for the site. Two, over 220 a unit now? I mean, so that's, we haven't dealt with it. And I mean, it's, it's, it's an absolute scandal that the state has never dealt with. It's 1974 since the Kenny report, and it's still in, uh, getting dust on the shelves. Uh, you say, Minister, that nationalising all aspects of housing is not the answer. But nobody is saying it is, right? We expect, uh, we expect the majority of housing still... Uh, to be in the private sector. But we, what we're saying is that in the region of 30% social housing units will need to be provided by the state. Now, you're talking about where the money is going to come from, and, and you've probably heard listening to me saying it, but I mean, and I said it again at all yesterday, but I mean, if you're going to get the money, and if you're serious about building local authority housing through, I mean, building social housing through the local authorities, you are going to have to challenge the fiscal rule. Uh, and I mean, we've seen where Italy, Spain, Lithuania, Austria are all going to break the fiscal rule this year. Why can't us? We have a very good reason. And France is going to break it for security reasons because they're dealing with ISIS. And we can't break it to deal with our emergency in housing. I don't understand why the state is not challenging Europe so that we can borrow money at less than 1% to go and build housing. Now, Minister, you made the point 
that uh, it takes two or three years uh, to build houses, right? Well, OK, listen, I, I'm well aware that it takes a long time to do things, and I've done it all my life, right? But I'll tell you what, big projects from start to finish, yes, they do take between two and three years, right? But I can tell you, right, if you take a site, just as I had mentioned, like Timon, right? If, when, when the design is done, planning approved, ready to go, and the, fun, the funding approved, right? Do you know how long it takes to actually build them? About well, one year. No more. I swear to God. One year. And in the other stages. Sorry? And in the other stages. And in the other stages. Yeah, I mean, I'm just saying, there's uh, huge projects I take agree. a long time, right? But I mean, small projects don't. And this country is full of small sites. And Dublin City has loads of them. Now, hold on a minute, right? I mean, there's, there's, do you not admit, Minister, that there's a huge concentration on the part of the local authorities on the big bang effect of big sites. Why aren't we, why aren't we getting the small sites going? Why don't we get the small builder back into the game? We, the small builder, the small builders all over the country dying to do work. And you know what? I think something else as well. They're not looking for a profit of 20 or 40 thousand a unit, right? Uh, the, the builders that I know are probably different from the fellows that Frank Daly might know, but they're not looking for that. I tell you what, if they made between five and ten thousand profit per unit, they'd be delighted with themselves. They'd be more than happy. But uh, so there's, there's. Uh, do you not? Uh, I'm asking you, Minister. Is it possible to actually activate? a lot of, of the smaller sites and get the smaller builder back in. But then we're back to the finance problem again. Can the state start organising the finance firm? Because the banks won't give it to him. The banks don't want to lend to him. Most of the building that's going on in this town today is being done by investment funds and the Irish banks are not even funding it. But these guys come up with their own money. Right? And they're dominating what's been built at the moment. You have the, fellows, you have the Kennedy Wilsons and the Heinzes now building, but they're only building for the rental market. So they don't have to worry about having to sell them at a low price. Okay. Sorry, OK. Um, um, right, sir. Look at, um, uh, Minister, my, my, just, just to, uh, my, my last question was, do you think it would be possible for the state to actually start funding these small projects? Because... And, and to actually help the builder to actually build the housing, be it 50% social, 50% affordable, uh, even if some of it is private. But uh, they do need help. I'm going to, uh, Minister, you might bank all of these because we will run out of time if I don't go through the various deputies. Deputy Daly. Yeah, uh, thanks, Chair. And I'm here for Deputy Maureen O'Sullivan, just to get, <laughs> And I have to go to the refugee discussion, but, so I won't repeat points. But I think the... Uh, discussion has been very wide-ranging. The Minister correctly made the point that the housing market that we have is a result of political and social choices. And in essence, that's really the project of this group, is to make political and social choices going forward. And my concern, out of everything that's been said so far, is that repeating the same mistakes isn't going to give us a different outcome. And from a lot of the documentation that I've seen from the Department and from the Minister's comments uh, today, that to me seems to be what we're doing because you correctly say the heart of this is what is the state's role in housing provision. And that is really it because, you know, you're correct in saying things like the social housing list is not the numbers that are bandied around. There has always been people on the social housing list who didn't maybe want a social house at the end of it. They were doing it to access rent allowance and all that. We all know that. Many of us being from local authority background, that's not the issue. Is the social housing crisis now worse than it was a number of years ago when those problems existed? And the answer has to be it is. Because when I was on the council, there was never people waiting, getting a letter saying your average wait is 10, 12 years to be accommodated. So unless we accept that, would you not think we're, we're, we have a problem? Because the figures he gave us at the start of the 13,000, and this gets to the heart of the matter, that you say were provided as social housing, they weren't. 8,000 of them like, were either RAS uh, rent supplement arrangements reclassified as HAP or RAS accommodations, which were coming on board anyway. They weren't new units. Well, they were, Minister. The figures are there, and they weren't new units. And if we keep doing that, you say there's no problem with investment. But if you're investing in the private sector to deliver all the time, I think we're going to have the same problems. I would like to hear your comments on, you talked about the pie, 
and taking money from other areas. But would you not accept the point made that if you accept the size of the pie, we're not going to get a solution to this because the amounts of money needed are, are quite vast. I'd like you to comment on maybe some direct initiatives because a lot of this, I think, the state has to have a more direct role. And there is, for example, a lot of housing stock out there that is underutilised. People who want to downsize and so on. Dublin City Council, for example, have about 500 people on a list who want to downsize to older people units, single dwellings. But they can't because that unit for older people isn't there, the one bed provision and so on. So we have stock out there. The idea of the state directly encouraging initiatives for people to give up that in the way in people used to sell their dwelling and give one third to the council in return for being reaccommodated, the 100 euro sites that used to be there, because there are a lot of pocket sites that local authorities have that three and four people could get together and build a house for themselves the old way in which affordable housing was done. And I think unless we tilt the direction back, would you not agree to more state provision? There won't be uh, a way forward on this. Just two quick questions. One was on, you posed correctly, how do you make land available? Well, I mean, we had the answer to that in the Kenny report. And has that been looked at, really? Because there's been a huge problem in the lifetime of the last government with the last Attorney General, I suppose she's still the Attorney General's advice on constitutional issues. But constitutional issues are only decided by the legislator and by the courts. So we need to either test these there or change the constitution. And you were quite willing to change them on really ridiculous things like the age of the president. So this is more important. And I think it should be, well, good. So we'll be all on the same side then when it comes out on that. Um, my last point, Minister, is just in terms of rapid bills and your points about objections from communities to social housing, which I think is a little bit unfair. Uh, people in many areas would object to any type of housing if a cul-de-sac has been opened up and, and their, uh, whatever has been interfered with. But would you not accept that Beaumont, you mentioned, that it wasn't sensible to buy a big block for pure social housing units, that you might have been better off and would have been for all sorts of reasons in offering 50, buy the whole lot, sell 50% of it for private housing and use that money to acquire social housing in a different area. And that's precisely the point about rapid bills. You said, and I'd like you to explain, that you are spending money buying houses, and we know that, but if you take the rapid build project that you've planned for Balbriggan, you're planning to spend three million more on those rapid build units than it would cost you to acquire the same number of units across Balbriggan, which would free up that amount of money. So you're not spending the same amount of money. Uh, you might also deal with the time uh, to take and to deliver rapid build houses, which are now not modular, they're timber frame houses. And if they were to go through the normal plan and permission and so on, they wouldn't be uh, necessarily any quicker than uh, any other timber frame dwelling. So. Thank you. Deputy, you might hold those for a moment. We, we... Uh, Deputy Quinlevin. Well, thanks. And, uh, we'll keep direct questions. Yeah, to the, to the Minister. Thank, thanks, yeah. Minister, for coming. Uh, I welcome the fact that you say you're going to, um, the needs assessment will be done across all councils, but I'd be, I would have a concern to make sure that it's done accurately. I believe that in 2013, my own city of Limerick, where it was done, that 1,690 people disappeared off of the list. I believe a lot of them still had a housing need and that wasn't done properly. So I would be concerned that if we do a needs assessment that it's done accurately and we make sure that people who are on the list are contacted because I don't believe it was done in Limerick properly because I believe some people allegedly got one letter. I believe some of them didn't get one letter because up to, up, still to this date, we're dealing with people who believe they're on the housing list and not on the housing list. So I'll be concerned that if we do that, we do it exactly right. And it is important we have, a, we have the list that will be correct, that we can, we can look at solutions uh, dealing with the number that are actually on that list. Uh, Minister, you, you mentioned um, the procurement process, which has been mentioned by a lot of uh, deputies here. And I do have a concern about it as to why it can't be speeded up. And you might, you might explain to us some ways that we could do it faster. The, the project out in Ballymun, the rapid build houses, why can't we just change the process quickly to, to deliver houses quicker? Um, you say there was objections to a number of applications and Deputy Daly, I think, dealt, dealt with that very, very well. There has been a, uh, objections, but also there's a number of projects, and I mentioned Limerick again, we have a regeneration project there, 
which seven years into it, no, no houses have been delivered in Samiris Park or in the Ballinacourt Western area. And there's no objections to those any plans that would be done in those areas. We could have, we could have built those and put house, people into those houses years and years ago. Uh, we reviewed the project in 2014, as you know, Minister, um, but still we haven't built significant houses in most of those regeneration areas. There's 50-odd houses built in the Maros area, but we've knocked probably 300 houses up there, so it hasn't delivered the project it was supposed to deliver. Uh, in your housing, housing strategy for 2020, you, you said it was the... Um, the largest social housing investment in the history of the state, and I was interested in with that comment when I read it, and I, you repeated that in the Dáil, I think on a number of occasions. But could you detail in that then the capital spend uh, per year over the six years of the strategy, what would be spent year on year? And also then you might compare that with the capital spend that was, sp that was spent in the six years previous to that strategy being implemented, like 2007, 2008, etc. I also believe, um, you know, some of, the, some of the projects you've done, like there's one in my own area, again, I don't want to be just harping on Limerick the whole time, but there was a project that was supposed to come up with, to, to deliver 11 houses in the, what was called the Shelburne Square area of Limerick. That has been um, some private developer who <coughs> hopped in and bought it before we bought it. It was an um, type of property. And I wonder, is there any others that we know about across the state where that has happened, where it's in this list but it's not going to be built or delivered for us? That's 11 units in Limerick. Um, is that going to be replaced by 11 other units or something similar? Or is that going to happen? Is that happening in other local authorities across, across the state? Uh, the other thing is where I have a deep concern, obviously, is your, your, your housing strategy was reliant on uh, up to 80% of deliverance private rented properties. Um, for instance, in Limerick yesterday, and again go back to Limerick, but this is figures we, we saw yesterday, there was five one-bedroom apartments available and the rent for those was between six and seven hundred and fifty euros they were looking for for a one-bedroom apartment in Limerick, with the rent supplement being 375 for a single person, so that is um, it's not really what's, what's going to happen. Also, some of the projects we're doing there I just have a concern, obviously we want to get them delivered as fast as we can, but for instance in hospital in County Limerick we're, we're building 20 units there at a cost of 185,000 each if you, if you divide the 20 into, into the, um, the money that's been allocated for that. But you can buy a house in a hospital at the moment for 75,000 euros and there's a number of hos houses available in that area for 75,000 euros which is 100, 100 odd euros, 1,000 euros cheaper than what the capital bill is going to be. So you said it yourself, Minister, the, ads, the figures don't add up. So is there a provision in this to review things where we're going to build something, if the money's allocated, why don't we just buy the houses there and we can deliver them much quicker? Obviously, if we can build houses, it's a lot better. You put people back to work as well. So uh, that's some of the questions I just wanted to ask there. Um, I think I've asked all of them. Oh, yeah, one other issue. Is the, there was an issue raised, and there's a bit of confusion about it. The credit unions have been in touch with all the deputies. Um, they've sent the housing policy into us and offers of monies that they have that we could access. And could you update us on what context we've had with the credit unions? Sorry, uh, Deputy, not meaning to, to interfere, okay. but just the the committee had previously arranged to meet the credit union specifically on Thanks. that issue. So That's my final comment. We, we, we will, as a committee, we'll wait for that, the that. credit unions on that. Um, I'll continue, if you don't mind, Minister, and we'll bank the questions. Well, so uh, Deputy Function. Um, thanks, Chair, and um, thanks to the Minister for coming in. I'm going to have to, to leave shortly to go speak, so I apologise for, for that in advance. Um, I just have some very brief questions because a lot of the points have been made and I don't think there's any point in, in repeating them. In relation to the targets for year one and the strategy, is it possible to get a county by county breakdown? And I appreciate you wouldn't have that information right here now, but if we can get that forwarded to us. Um, and in relation to HAP tenancies, can we get the same and how many of these are actually new tenancies or how many are recycled people coming from existing rent supplements or how many are actually coming off the list or coming possibly from homeless or potentially homeless? I have two, um, some other questions as well in relation to the homeless situation. Um, a lot of people who are, in, who are experiencing homelessness would say that one of the the immediate measures we could take, and that is some of the stuff we have to look at, what immediate measures we can take, would be the raising of rent supplement limits. Now, I don't believe we can do that in isolation. That would be a disaster in terms of rents increasing for everybody. But if it was linked with rent certainty, and I'm just actually looking for the Minister's opinion on that, um, in relation to raising rent supplement uh, along with um, implementing rent certainty, because 
we do need to have some immediate measures in relation to it. Um, also, in with rural homelessness, this is the point I made before, I think it's very different to homelessness in an urban area. Um, for example, the constituency I'm in, there's a good mix between rural and urban. It's Carlo and Kilkenny. But pe a lot of people who are experiencing homelessness in a rural area, they cannot take up the option of of the emergency accommodation because it is so far from possibly where their kids are going to school or if they even have part-time work that they can't actually travel and that's a major issue and I wonder has anything been done in the department to address that or to look at that specifically because uh, a lot of small villages and towns don't have hotel and B&B accommodation for example in Kilkenny there is three facilities that deal with emergency accommodation but if you're homeless in Erlenford or Callan or somewhere, it's 15 to 20 minutes of a drive away. I'm sorry, I'm just wondering if you're actually hearing the questions I'm asking. Yeah, sorry, I'm I was asking. just asking about your second question. I, was, I didn't hear that, okay. so that's the reason I was asking. I was trying to make sure I didn't miss your question. Okay, thanks. Um, okay. So I, just, I would like to an answer in relation to that in relation to rural homelessness because I think it is a specific point. And my final question and I, is in relation to private property. There was a lot of mention of it in your in your speech, and we all know uh, properties that in all our towns, villages, cities that are empty for years, 10, 15, 20 years. I know there's obviously an issue in relation to property rights, but surely, given that there, we are in such a crisis situation with housing, we should be looking at something as to how we can acquire those properties. You know that they've been empty for years, and we should be taking them in, refurbishing them, and using that because. Another point that you made as well was in relation to, you know, having maybe large developments of social housing, but there is empty houses uh, all over the country that we could be looking at taking over. I know there's an issue in relation to property rights, but there has to be something that we can do about that because not only is it it's bad practice for every estate and every area to have empty houses there, it always leads to antisocial behaviour. And it would be obviously better for everybody living in the area if somebody was living there. And it also <coughs> helps to address some of the issue around the housing crisis and around the immediate homeless uh, crisis that we have. Deputy. Thanks. Uh, Deputy Butler. <coughs> Unless you want to, I don't want to miss questions. So it's just, okay, no, I, 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 we, we just pause. We let the minister address. Uh, you might I, start with Deputy Function if you don't mind her questions because I, I believe she's. Sorry, it's today. just I, I genuinely won't yeah, have to. Okay. Um, um, okay, uh, Deputy Fun uh, Function, um, just in relation to your last question uh, to, um, on the uh, issue of uh, uh, property rights, um, uh, again, it hits into Article 43, you know, I suppose, so there's questions there. Um, I, I would agree simply with your question, to be honest with you. Um, we also have to have real data, and there's sp specific questions in relation to the census which we'll have through now in a few months' time, which will actually help us with this. So that's positive. We'll, we'll, and working with um, uh, local authorities and others as well, um, we'll be able to you know, actually zone in and see what properties are empty, derelict, or whatever. So you know, we might be able to put in place a, a more comprehensive plan as a result of that. Rural homelessness uh, is, a, is an issue, and in fairness to uh, to Brian and the team, um, we do have uh, plans in place across the country in relation to that, where local authorities have the capacity to go out and source uh, properties as close uh, the whole issue of housing first, uh, as close to possible as possible to the actual individuals involved. Um, obviously, you know, in many cases there can be very complex needs, um, but they have working with the HSE and other agencies, they have the capacity to source. Um, uh, properties and they're, they're, those people are, are treated as a, a priority. Um, so they have the capacity to do that and they will be facilitated in whatever way they can. Uh, I take what you say in relation to rent supplement. I think it's a very interesting comment um, uh, from, from you in relation to that, which I know. Um, you asked for st stats in relation to uh, um, uh, the targets. Um, you know, you. You have the uh, have this document. Um, it shows out the um, targets uh, up until uh, 2017. Uh, so it's basically this year and next year. So it's a two-year uh, list. Um, but we can try, we'll break it down by year uh, if uh, if uh, if necessary. We'll go through all the local authorities. But in relation to your own 
in relation to um, Carlo Kilkenny, uh, Carlo has a, a funding allocation of uh, 20 million, and Kilkenny has a funding allocation of 43 and a half odd million. I, and, I, I understand then, that point. In relation to, sorry, in relation to actual houses, it's 435 for Carlo and 686 for Kilkenny. May I just say that there's a lot of information in that document I put, put out there on purpose just to provide information to people. Um, okay, um, relation to a range of um, uh, in relation to a range of uh, other uh, issues, um, I tried to make sure that's the reason I didn't want because I, I wasn't going to. Prime I, Minister, I, I was. I, um, yeah, local authorities. I know that. Yeah, can provide. Uh, I can acquire uh, private property and ha have done so under a range of other uh, measures. I just want to make sure I get to a, a number of questions. Um, Deputy um, Quinlevin, I, I think I'm going to hop between questions because there's just the overlap. Deputy Quinlevin, I think I hope I answered your question. So, Deputy Quinlevin uh, asked questions in relation to the capital spend, and I've, you know, I've quoted the four billion. It is the largest amount ever allocated towards local authority or towards. Uh, Social housing in a multi-annual capacity. It's not. Wait a second. I, it is it's in a relation. It's of 2008. So how could it be the largest? Yeah. You keep saying this. The question I asked was what we were going to yeah, spend I'm in gonna six years. I'm going to answer your question. Well, I'm going to answer your question if I'm allowed to answer yeah, your question. Yeah. You know, we are in a spirit of cooperation. Yeah. Okay. Um, it's the largest amount announced in relation to a multi-annual plan for social housing. That's a fact, right? And yes, when we did, when this country was burst into the seams with money. Of course, there was individually every year larger amounts. Uh, that, that's a fact, but it wasn't multi-annual. It wasn't planned over a period of time. And that's just a simple fact, and that's what I've always said. I mean, you couldn't. The, the figures are all there, deputy. I mean, if you want me to, to put about in relation to um, the capital plan, 2016, uh, is, there's 2.9 billion committed in the capital plan. Um, I've, I mean, the figures are all publicly available. I'll send them on to you. Yeah, yeah. Take, take up more time here. Um, the, um, a few specific issues, to be honest with you, in relation to Limerick, I'm glad to so say It wasn't specifically for Limerick, but it was, is that happening in other places as well? So no, is, is there a prim context? primarily no is, is the answer. But let me just say this to you, um, and, and it's very important. Um, <laughs> and, and also the key thing was that's the 11 units gone. So well, yeah, but here's the issue. You know what you need to do there? You need to go back to your local authority and ask them what other projects they're putting forward. Yeah. Because, as you know from this... Well, I know the projects, yeah. I'm yeah, well you're, you're well aware Limerick, yeah, yeah. Limerick City and County yeah. has just under £60 million to spend. Um, so they can put forward... And by the way, they should decide the projects. I mean, they should decide the projects. And I agree with Deputy Wallace. The more smaller projects that are put forward, the better. Right? I'll come back to that, because it's obvious that there's a, a, some information gap out there. But uh, if, if those 11 units are gone, uh, and um, I'm, there may be other cases across the country, I'm not aware of them, don't to be honest. I expect you to know them all, yeah. Yeah, but um, I'm not aware of them, to be honest, but um, they can be replaced. They, it's local authorities put forward the projects. Um, the department doesn't put forward the projects. The local authorities put forward the projects, and that's the way it has to be. Minister, can I just clarify that subject. there? So it, you're going to give us a spend of that money anyway, so we can go with another project? Of course. Okay. But your local authorities know make that. the decisions. We, we do the approval process, and local authorities... And well, my understanding yeah. was the local authority approached you with, with sites that we had, and you came back then with, um, with proposals. Or no, they, no, the local authorities put, for, put forward, always put forward the projects. Yeah. Um, and, and they have their funding up, which I've outlined there to you, in relation to uh, uh, 2017. Um, in relation to um, the issues as regards uh, those on uh, uh, housing lists, may I just make the point here? I mean, the choice-based letting that happened down in Cork is an example. I believe choice-based letting should be put across the country. Let me just say that out straight. may need to be tweaked a little bit or whatever. I'm open to that, but I think it is a good policy. And, you know, when people are written to by local authorities uh, and they don't engage, I, I don't know what local authorities are meant to do. If people aren't going to engage, you know, with local authorities, I mean, you know, you have to, ha you have, to have some form of responsibility for re-engaging. But I'm open to the steps and all of that. But choice-based letting, I think, is actually a very good policy. Because in some cases, it, firstly, it, it shortens the period by which uh, houses are left, you know, 
uh, to be viewed by people and everything. People get to look and know where they're going and all. So it, it you know, takes out all the issues about people looking at locations and all of that sort of stuff. So it gives actually way more uh, uh, um, flexibility. So I think that's, uh, that's important. Um, I want to come back to uh, some more uh, questions which were put forward. Um, uh, very much uh, um, taken by uh, Deputy Wallace's contribution. Um, uh, maybe you should become uh, an actual, you should flip sides and actually be interviewed here as well as, uh, as being over there, given your experience. Um, but Next week, Minister. <laughs> um, but, um, and, you know, <laughs> there's a few things you can rule out. <laughs> Are, <I'm> sorry. <laughs> sorry, Minister. And that goes for a few other people in this room as well. But, um, but um, obviously, um, you know, there, there's, I find myself in agreement with a number of the comments that you've made. I'm straight about it. Uh, I don't agree with others. Um, but obviously, you've, we can't. Like, the issue in relation to central bank rules. We, I agree with them. Maybe need to be tweaked here today. They definitely need to be monitored. But in general, it is the right thing to do because you can't have houses going up to 500,000 and people that are worrying about for 30 years are going to pay for it. Um, you know, we can't go back to the boom and bust situation. We can't go back to the boom and bust situation where developers and builders went out there, people end up with massive mortgages and, and not able to pay them, leading into social issues, leading into estates not being finished, leading into developers and builders owing the state millions, if not billions, and, um, and the chances of getting that money back being absolutely uh, very low. We can't go back to that, and we can't allow the people who were engaged in that to get back into that space, and we can't allow the profit margins to be with the developers and the builders. It has to, they have to make a profit, we acknowledge that, but it has to come back to, uh, uh, down to the actual uh, the people who need the housing. Um, you asked uh, in relation to uh, the local authority uh, uh, process. Um, I was very taken by that. Deputy, I've changed all of this. So I'd ask the question, which you should go back to your local authority, and ask them why it is taking so long. I went through this. I presume you've read it. Um, I went through this and went through uh, all the uh, projects that are done for Wexford. So, in Wexford, you've got St. Aidan's Road, Wexford Town, 14 units. Barry's Town, Wellington Bridge, 16 units. Uh, Bolia Owen in Gorey, 9. Cleans, 10. Cherry Orchard in Escarty, 8. And there's more. Right? And they're all small projects. Right? Small projects. There's no reason in the world uh, for those uh, not to uh, proceed as quickly as possible. And they have all been sanctioned. And the issue is this, and maybe not a lot of people in here are fully aware of this. They're maybe not fully aware of this. Uh, if you want to listen to me, I'll, 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 maybe they're not fully aware of this, but I have changed uh, the process by which approval comes uh, for small projects. So many, virtually all of those projects would come in, in that process and across the country. For smaller projects where you have a four-stage process to come into the department to, for everything like that, it's now down to one for smaller projects, 15, 16 units, that sort of units, under 20 units. Um, and I think it was necessary to do that. Um, yeah, well, let me finish now, because I mean, in fairness, you asked a lot of questions. Um, so that, that is there. And the local authority have the capacity to do that. So, you know, there's some information gap or misinformation or something going on, sometimes in relation to what is happening here. But the capacity of local authorities to take control of this and do it themselves through a one-step process for small projects is there. I instigated it. I demanded it because I agreed with you that this had to quicken up. There is the time you have to go to planning and design and all of that sort of stuff. But as regards it, they just go flow away. Can I tell you something else, Deputy? They have the capacity to do it. But very, little, uh, very few of them do, if any, actually take up the chance of doing smaller projects through that process. And that's a question which the committee may want to ask. Why is that? It's been there for a while, they haven't done it. Um, it, it is something which I believe will be very fruitful into the future. Um, in, relation to, um, in relation to the uh, social housing uh, percentages, and social housing, as regards social housing percentages, you're right, of course, uh, the 9% uh, has to 
uh, has to grow. And that's why we've put in place uh, the process uh, that we have put in place. In relation to the vacant site levy, I disagree with you. Um, the local authorities are actively, actively planning for how they're going to use this. And they're very happy with it. By the way, you're talk I'm talking as a person who wanted to do way more. But I've already outlined to you how I was prevented from doing that. Right? And I, I, I wanted to do way more, but I couldn't actually do, uh, be as ambitious uh, as I wanted uh, uh, to, to be.